For the past month, I've been experimenting with YouTube Shorts to see if there's actually a market for them. Honestly, when I started, I didn't think there was much potential. But to my surprise, certain niches really take off. Today, I want to show you the one that's currently working really well for me, cute animal and people interactions. It's a crowd pleaser. Now, I've built a workflow that puts a human in the loop, literally. Because if you just crank these out like the internet tells you to, you'll end up spending a fortune on videos, and more than half of them won't even be usable. With this workflow, it first generates a batch of images. Then, through your Telegram app, you can approve or reject each one. Only the images you approve move forward and get turned into videos. This little step has saved me a ton of money and a lot of editing headaches. As you can see here, the Telegram app adds those handy little buttons. I'll show you exactly how to set that up. It's super simple. Let's do a quick demo. Once everything is set up, open your Telegram app and send a command to kick things off. Just type start and hit send. Telegram will respond, asking if you want to begin the first run. Click the button to confirm. Now, you'll see the workflow kick off, starting with the branch that creates the images. It enters a loop. I've set it to run four times, but you can adjust that to whatever number suits you. Here's what happens next. The workflow generates a prompt for an image, specifically tailored to our niche. After that, it creates prompts for both the audio and the video. All of this gets saved to the database. Then, the image is generated. Once it's ready, the database is updated again, and the image is sent straight to your Telegram for review. Now you get the chance to take your time and go through the images. Just reject the ones you don't like. Sure, it might cost you a few cents per image, but that's nothing compared to what you'd waste if you followed those fully automated processes some YouTube tutorials suggest. By doing it this way, you avoid sinking money into videos you'll never use. So only select the images you really like, the ones that are clean and defect-free. Once you accept them, only those will move forward and get turned into videos. All right, now let's start the workflow again and try to find an image we actually like. Let's say, for example, this one with the chick looks good, so we'll go ahead and accept it. As you can see, once it's accepted, the workflow follows a different path. This is the part that actually goes off and creates the video. It updates the database again. I'll show you what that looks like in Airtable in just a second. Next, it generates the video, reads the video prompt, and then sends both the video and audio prompts to another service that handles the audio. Once that's done, it sends you back the completed, final video, all ready to go. As you can see, I've added a wait note in the workflow. That's because video creation can take a bit of time. And honestly, there's no way to know exactly how long it'll take. So to handle that, the workflow runs a loop that checks in every few seconds to see if the video is done. Once it's completed, the process moves on smoothly from there. And finally, the last step in the process, once everything's done, you'll notice the buttons change to post and reject. Now, if the video didn't turn out great, hey, it happens, you can reject it. That's exactly why we built this review step in. But if you're happy with it, just click post and the workflow will automatically upload it straight to YouTube. Easy as that. All right, and there it is. As you can see, it's now live on YouTube for everyone to see which is pretty cool. Just a few clicks and boom, content published. All right, let's dive into the workflow. One important thing I wanna point out, whenever you're using Telegram with N8N, most tutorials out there don't really protect your workflows. That means if someone knows the name of your bot, they can use it too. Not ideal, right? So here's what I do. I build in a little firewall. There's a handy piece of code floating around the community that checks whether the incoming request is actually from your bot by matching the bot ID. This way, your N8N workflow only accepts requests from your own Telegram bot. I set the bot ID in a set node. Just pop your bot's ID in there, and boom, only your Telegram app can use the workflow. Then we move into a switch node, where we handle different commands. If we get an unknown command, we send back a helpful set of instructions. From there, Depending on the input, the flow branches out. We've got a path that creates a new set of images. If the video gets rejected, we update the database. 
If we delete an image, it's removed from the database. If we approve an image, that path leads to video creation. And finally, on the post path, we upload your video straight to YouTube. All right, now let's hop over to the database. It's super simple. Just one table called images. Inside that table, we've got a few key fields, a unique ID, a video prompt, an image prompt, the generated image, the generated video, an audio prompt, and the final video. We also track progress using statuses. When an image is created and ready to be turned into a video, we set the status to image ready. Once the video is generated and just waiting for audio, the status becomes video ready. And when everything's done, including the audio, we mark it as done, simple and clean. All right, let me show you how to set up Telegram and get your API key. The first thing you need to do is install Telegram, either on your mobile device or desktop. In this case, I'll show you how to do it on the desktop. Once it's installed, open the chat and type slash botfather. Botfather is basically the master bot on Telegram. You'll use it to create and manage all your bots. After typing in botfather, click start. You'll see a list of available commands. Now let's create a new bot. Type slash new bot and hit enter. It'll ask you to choose a unique name for your bot. Let's call it RoboJewel. Go ahead and confirm that. Next, it'll ask you for a username. This username has to end with underscore bot. Let's go with RoboJewel underscore bot. And done. Telegram just created your new bot and gave you your access token. Copy that access token. We'll need it in the next step. Now head back to N8N. Create a new credential. Paste in your access token. Leave the other settings as they are and give it a name you'll remember. And that's it. All right, when you click the Save button, it'll try to connect to your bot. If everything goes smoothly, you'll see this green bar light up. Yep, that's your sign that the connection was successful. All right, first thing we need to do is add a trigger. Click on the plus sign and search for Telegram. From the options that pop up, select Callback. We're going to start with the on message trigger. Once it opens, give it a name. I'm calling mine Brain because that's what I use in the template but feel free to name yours whatever makes sense for your project. Next, select your access token. This is the one linked to your bot. Now, here's an important part. We want the trigger to accept two types of input. Regular messages are fine for text, but if you're using buttons in Telegram, a plain message won't cut it. So we also need to handle callback queries. To do that, open the dropdown and select callback query. This way, the trigger node will listen for both regular messages and callback queries, since they come in different formats. And yes, we'll handle both later on. Once that's done, go ahead and close this window. All right, next up, we need to get your bot ID. That's important because whenever we want to send messages back to your bot, we need to know exactly which one we're talking to. The easiest way to find it is to start your workflow by clicking Execute, then head over to Telegram and send your bot a message. I'm just typing test here. Once you do that, you'll see the workflow runs. Open up the execution and boom, there's your bot ID right there in the data. Now back out of that, click the plus button and search for set. Add a set node to the workflow. Give it a name like bot ID and then paste or drag your bot ID into the appropriate field. Let's go ahead and rename the node to something more descriptive. Call it set telegram bot ID. All right, now to protect our bot and our workflow, we're going to add that firewall we talked about earlier. Click the plus button, search for code, and add a code node. Then hop over to the community, or wherever you've saved the snippet. Grab that piece of code and paste it into the node. What this does is simple but effective. If any bot other than yours tries to connect to the workflow, it'll get hit with an access denied. Solid practice for keeping things secure. Right after that, we're going to add a switch node. So again, click the plus, search for switch, and drop it into your workflow. All right, 
In the switch node, we need to add a few things. This is basically our decision-making tree. The way I set it up, it's passing in a value that combines two parts joined by an underscore. So first, we need to split that value. Let's head back to the community and copy that line of code. We'll use it as value one, and for value two, make it post. Then, keep going with the same steps. Click to add another condition, and repeat the process for approve, reject, reject video, new, and does not exist. We're just laying out each possible case so N8N knows exactly what to do. Think of it like giving it a map so it doesn't get lost. All right, there's your switch node with five possible outcomes. But as it stands, it's a bit tricky to tell which path leads where. To make things clearer, head back into the switch node and click on Rename Output for each condition. You'll find this option just below every output. For example, if you click Rename Output under the first one and name it Post, you'll see it show up nicely labeled in the flow, much easier to follow. I'm gonna pause the video here and go ahead and label the rest. Be back with you in just a second. All right, so when a message comes in, it first hits the firewall node. Let's go ahead and rename that to firewall, just to keep things tidy. Next, it goes through the decision tree we set up. If any of the conditions match, the message follows that specific path. But what if none of the conditions are met? That's where I like to create a dropout path to handle those cases gracefully. Click the plus sign on the default path, search for telegram, and select Send a Text Message. Once it opens, make sure your credentials are set up. Your chat ID is actually your bot ID. If it's not showing up, just run the execution once, pin the node, and when you come back, the values should now be available. Now, drag your bot ID into the chat ID field for the message. Let's help the user out with something like, would you like to start a new run now? To make things convenient, we'll add buttons using an inline keyboard. That tells Telegram to create clickable options. So click to add an inline keyboard, then hit Add Button. For the first button, let's use the label new underscore start, and make sure you include the underscore, because that's how we've coded it in our node. Click out to save your changes, and let's give the workflow a spin to see how it performs. Oops, looks like we missed a small but important detail. What just happened is that none of the conditions were met, but our dropout at the bottom didn't trigger as expected. I've got a hunch we set it up incorrectly. Let's jump back in and take a look. Ah, there it is. The issue was with the condition. It should have been set to object does not exist. Go ahead and change it to that. What this means is that if the required format isn't found, the flow will drop down to our fallback path. All right, next up, let's fix this error. What went wrong here? Looks like a bad request. Let's take a closer look. Ah, I see the issue. We set up a button, but we forgot to give it a value. The text field is what shows up on the button itself, so that's what the user will see. But we also need to give it a value, which is what gets sent back when the button is clicked. So click on Add Field, and enter a value for the button. Once that's done, let's give it another shot and see if it runs smoothly this time. Okay, great. As you can see, 
Since we sent in the word test and we didn't include that in our conditions, it dropped down to the fallback path. The user received a message and the button now displays the text we added. All right, now in Telegram, go ahead and click on the button. Just make sure you've started your workflow first, and there it is. You can see it runs through smoothly and hits the new endpoint just as expected. All right, so I took that part a bit slower, mainly because we haven't gone into this much detail with Telegram in any of the previous videos. All right, if you want to get your hands on this fully functional template, just head over to our school community. You can download it right from there. We've got two versions available. One is a bit more advanced and includes a human-in-the-loop step for manual approval. That version lives inside our 1K Club. The other is a simplified version that runs the entire workflow, image generation, video creation, audio, everything, without the manual review step or the more complex database setup. You can find that one in our main school community. Just hop over, sign up, and you'll be able to grab whichever version suits your needs. Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you found this helpful or it sparked some ideas for your own automation journey, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps more productivity enthusiasts discover these time-saving techniques. Until next time, keep automating the boring stuff. I'll see you in the next video.